uh, and I have a quick project uh, like data set which I can uh, take you through to understand this part. So it will be uh, so uh, which will give you a clear, uh, good flavor idea of things. Uh, in the in the top line when we talk to overview, it will be most often giving you a flavor what the contents will be like in the fifth background, if how the analytics work is evolved where you actually find the application around so mostly around the background and application you're going to talk about second as i mentioned in a business review like key metrics how you find out how you, basically the importance of creating those insights and how you identify the business problem this is something we will be uh, talking here the next part as in like detailed is there and if i go come down but uh, broadly here is important is like voice and heart of customer is basically uh, Every industry in today's world, there comes the question of your, uh, you know, customer-centric decisions. So this is this in details is covered in the next part. So let me take you through the next part. Uh, knowing heart and voice of customers. So basically, what what happens here is like when you talk about a, about the customers, right? So different set of customers. Uh, so do you have any idea what what is segmentation? Uh, not technically. So what do you understand by segmentation? Uh, it's dividing customers uh, based on some category. Perfect. Or, uh, so. Demographics, it can be anything, right? So uh, yeah. why I will quickly jump on to the... Um, So basically, what happens is I'll quickly uh, let me. This is a bit of the campaign analytics. So what happens is like whenever we talk about it, this is a part that's called comes comes under consumer analysis. So what happens is uh, these are the things that we will be covering. Computer analysis is something like uh, you know a lot of guys if you have a product data, so basically they a competitor data they try to understand on those lines. So when we talk about a target audience, so this slide is important. Just yes, I'm going to use this slide only. Uh, when you talk about the key basic rule is like different customers, as you mentioned, age, demographics, and so on and so forth. So basically, from the perspective of uh, understanding or knowing a customer is important because every customer have their own unique traits and behavioral aspects, right? Suppose it lead and today, if you see the the kind of offers maybe on the online often you get some kind of personalized offerings depending on your choice your preference and everything right why you need a segmentation so just to answer who are my customers uh, what are they like what do they buy where can i find them how i can reach them so these are the key questions our business need to answer so in order to first answering the question who are my customer the first thing that we need to do is a segmentation. A segmentation is nothing but your differentiating your customers uh, so that differentiating customers into a homogeneous group. So groups which are having a same kind of preference, needs and stuff, right? So that I can classify my customers into different buckets which have a unique kind of a trait. And now I know while I do the segmentation, I know what they're like what kind of stuff they would like to buy and in terms of like where i can find them so where i can find them is basically uh they will have some point of contact to uh, to go around supposedly if it is for amazon or flipkart a kind of a deal that you're going to come uh, come to you they will be contacting you through your uh through your mail or maybe some uh they can give you in in your app also they can give you personalized kind of a discount offers right so how they will do it there comes an important perspective of you. This is called a segmentation in terms. There can be two ways of segmentation can be a different type. Like since you are grouping customers of different, uh, you know, having different traits. Supposedly giving you a quick example from the uh, real time project that I did was um, there was a like big retailer from the China and they wanted to understand like um, because they have those Chinese New Year and New Year also. These are the key events for them. So they said like, OK, I have a marketing budget of this million and i want to invest this set with some right customers so definitely while you talk about the investment basically what does it mean that supposedly you have a health and beauty products and you have a different supplier for different brands operating so some brand can can be give you a 15 or 20 percent off 
some brand can be giving you a 10% off, right? So the objective will be how you classify a customer based on the kind of products they buy. Giving a quick example will be now, supposedly you go to a grocery shop and the, the way you buy your product. So supposedly for a family oriented person, you will see the unique trait, how they will come up is like, they are basically shopping in the weekends and mostly they are they do, uh, do some kind of a plant shopper versus someone who will be a bit of the in a bachelor's or basically a kind of a convenience lover they will definitely try to go somewhere around say a convenience store so called 24 into 7 x uh, if you have 7 11 kind of these are the convenience outlets also you will see around uh, uh, i think for from india perspective we don't have much of them but Mostly those uh, supermarket stores or uh, express stores uh, is basically where you can get your daily necessities. Like uh, someone, they, they go and buy ready to eat kind of something just to save your time. Also, someone may go for your uh, bakery or the dairy products. So basically, uh, since these are the kind of the products which you uh, which you cannot save or store for a long. So basically, uh, those who are more inclined to buy these products, are tend to okay they're either going for some for their breakfast as a mission or they're going for a quick lunch so whatever can be and basically this kind of customer groups if they're into your like early corporates and uh, they don't feel like you know cooking and all so basically there will be a different pattern you can observe in their buying history so now if i understand a uh, supposedly a family where you know it's basically aged kind of a shopper so they will have a different need, different kind of a thought process because they are the ones who definitely will love to buy a kind of a fresh vegetables. They want to have the cooking as a passion or things around. So that can be way of different thing. So another group, uh, supposedly, if you if you see a group shopping, so most of the time they're visiting, but only buying into organic products, uh, less of fat, and basically <coughs> buying into more of a healthy domain. So there you can classify these are your either fitness free or healthy uh, buyers. Hi, Shuroji. Hi, Shuroji. Yeah. Just interrupting you for a second. Yeah, yeah. Hello. Yeah, Shuroji. Hello, uh, yeah. I am just, yeah, I am just dropping off. I have a demo of my at my end. Okay. So I'm just dropping. Okay, off. okay, sure. Okay, okay. Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay, cool. thank cool. you. Thank you. So now it's basically, so now from this behavioral like way you shop, so you can classify the customers under this different bucket. So here comes segmentation is very important. Another part of segmentation that if I talk about is basically we called like in the business, how you understand who is your most loyal customers. So understanding a loyal customer is nothing but if a customer, because what happens in the, it's, it's, it's a rule of Pareto that says like 20% of the customers always give you 80% of the sales. So it's not an exact figure in that line, but it's broadly, if you see that your most valuable customers, they'll always give, give you a three times or four times more sales than the rest of the thing. So that is very important to understand and how you classify them. So then we are going to talk about, uh, if you just going back to my, uh, to the PDF version here. So here, if you talk about a segmentation, I, I'm talking identifying the loyal or the most valuable customers to retain in the business because if you lose one customer who are loyal with you and there is basically he will definitely have a three times or four times more sales than the rest of the group so impacting or losing those customers is, uh, is something quite you need to you need to prevent so that's why we talk about a segmentation based on how uh, this is called rfm is nothing but a rule based segmentation uh, we this is called recency frequency and monitoring so basically we'll look into how frequently someone was shopping what was on spend value he was giving and uh, basically how recently he has shopped so basically this will give us to identify a loyal set of the customers this will be nothing but based on my basic basics of statistics so here is even i mean, we are going to talk about your base stats so expectations will not be all that you know you all, you all already know this uh, mean median statistics quartile percentile uh, so definitely, of course, you will be knowing, but a good a brush up of how we use these basic statistics in, in terms of understanding this most profitable set of customers. So this is this is a one type of identifying a loyal customer. So definitely what happens, the kind of, if you talk about a reward points, right? 
so a loyal customer will always be rewarded so the main why we as uh, the segmentation will be like how we could have differentiate different strategies for different customer segments so for doing the same so we need to understand if this is my most loyal customers or most valuable customers always i sh i should be most uh, honest with these guys and the kind of offerings that i am going to have that should always attract them in terms of i know these are the categories they were buying into it and while they are buying so a lot of times what is uh, what it does is like it's more of like accumulating like every time you're shopping so for more than 1000 so you get a reward point of so and so forth and this reward point and redeeming these reward points is something a key mechanic by which you can engage your loyal customer so this segmentation is purely will be based on your rule base this is something i'm going to show you uh, from uh, from the data set today uh, the sas data set the second as i was talking about a behavior segmentation like understanding what when and how customers buy basically there are different in patterns or which are showing in the slide so now the second part like once we have you know bucketed the customers into different segments the next part is important to know the how these customers are significantly different in nature so basically it is called a profiling so once we do the profiling so it will you understand okay uh, group with x and group and y they are different because group x is more of like a young population young generations by group uh, 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 y is more of like family having kids or basically a toddler kind of thing so someone having a toddler or a baby will have always go and buy baby diapers uh, you know baby uh, liquid wash or powder like those kind of stuff so here you uh, so always some of the retailers they try to engage the family like having kids or toddlers because they know the lifetime value because if they could attract these uh, uh, you know the family will having kids because they will be having a lot of needs kids because as if you talk about uh, uh, so in terms of engaging them so always they target uh, how can we give them the best of the offer so that in the longer term at least for the five to ten years it will give them a net a uh, kind of a secured uh, every time we talk about a, a incremental benefit out of it so today if they are spending around five thousand in the next year they can spend six thousand or seven thousand so this is how they actually try to stretch the share of wallet and always they try because every of the uh, like any uh, any uh, be it any e-commerce or for e-commerce is mostly they target the young populations and basically different uh, different e-commerce platforms it's like uber and ola this will be having a different principles like even for them the segmentation will be like if someone boarding a cab and they're basically they are boarding uh, they're boarding it for every day basically they're going in the office goods if i can even call them like they're showing from destination drop and pickup is quite same throughout the day in the weekends maybe it's a different versus second it can be those who are uh, uh, only dropping at a airport or you know in early morning flight so basically business customers or something they can call us like third can be those who are basically not very frequent but mostly travels for a long distance in the weekends so now basically these three group or four groups will be quite different in nature right as in cab operating thing they they also will find it okay how i can which whom customers which set of group customers i need to give a coupon because if they're seeing that you are not taking a cab for the past say one month then they could understand okay there is there can be some problem or some issues because uh, this customer is not boarding the cab because maybe the prices uh, were high or basically so in order to attract the customer the best way the, any company does is give them a personalized coupon of like uh, if you I will uh, supposedly for the next 10 rides, uh, you will get a 50% off. So basically, this is how they go with the segment because they cannot go, uh, you know, targeting all the customers here. So they can't be generic. They have to find. So there also a segmentation plays a very important role in terms of the strategy that you're going to talk about. Here we are going to talk about from the retail data set where we're going to understand what categories the customer shop, and then basically it's a clustering exercise we are going to talk about. So I have also mentioned like what kind of uh, statistical thing that we will be doing. So this is more on the dimension. So, and we can talk about more because how you reduce because you have so many categories customer is shopping. So now you need to make them more relevant. Basically, uh, how you from 100 or 200 set of variables, how you can reduce it to some more meaningful variables. And uh, then we apply the clustering technique. So this is something the 
technique we are going to cover uh, in the session later on uh, in, in the classes of course uh, segmentation and this is k means and hierarchical this is your clustering thing so firstly we are going to start with the basics of the fast where you're going to do the kind of a rule based thing so this part is broadly these two parts will keep going your uh, skill sets in the base SAS and bit on advanced sense. So once we are done with this rule based things, now we are going to getting into the clustering or analytical uh, like analytical techniques here. So this part will be this is called a clustering. The next part that we are going to talk about uh, this uh, this uh, exercise is more of like how you understand. Supposedly at the end of the day, you do some kind of a customer survey, right? and you do some review there are some hundred of set of questions that have been asked and finally you you are asked to rate uh or basically give a final rating like out of five two or three so it can be a set of because if you talk about uh, your experience uh with amazon or your experience with any uh say uh uber or ola supposedly if i talk about an example so definitely from the business perspective they need to understand like what are the key drivers for customer satisfaction? Here we are going to talk about, supposedly you've been asked like how frequent do you board a cab? So how you will you rate our, uh, uh, so in terms of the issues if you talk about, so in terms of finding a cab in the nights, how, uh, you know, how comfortable or uh, your experience out of one to five. Second, it can be, so they try to give you those questions just to understand like in terms if you are rating overall rating is say out of five you are giving a two so it means if the rating is four what are the key drivers or key issues uh that is that is impacting your uh, customer satisfaction versus if i see that a customer who is highly rating like in terms of four or five so what are the key uh, factors for that so statistical technique i'm not directly talking right now uh, because it will be bit on the statistical part of it. So because I will be covering entire thing in, uh, in detail. So while in the, in the session, so broadly what comes out like uh, it's very important. Like that's what we call about our market research data and all. So there always is important from your segments. You know, these are the customers and you bucket them into segments, right? These different customer segments might be having different set of issues, right? Someone in the other case of the Uber when I talk about Uber is basically now you know different customer groups exist. Different customer groups, basically those who have to travel late in the night and they need to travel to the remote places will always, uh, uh, you know, number of drivers canceled. Uh, if you talk about uh, uh, in his last 10 rides, that is very high, say. That can be a cause of a dissatisfaction for him. So now every customer will be different and different customers will have a different problems attached to it. It's basically understanding what are the factors and in terms of their key issues uh, for their experience, uh, you know, from, from the perspective of customer experience. So this is something we are going to cover in the drivers and the factors. The next part here is identification of a high risk customer. So basically, as I mentioned, uh, so are you getting me or you have any questions so far? I can address that. Uh, yes, yes, I'm getting it. Okay, so the fourth part is like as we talked about. So the way it has been structured, we know understanding your customer, the segmentation, then basically the factors impacting them to uh, impacting your satisfaction. The next part that comes into this is something called a predictive model. So if you look into any other things, you will see a lot of words. It's like predictive analytics, analytics, and everything. So what is predictive analytics about? How you can estimate or how you can understand the customers who's going to leave or go away or churn. This is called a churn behavior. So I know these are my set of loyal customers who were with me, but they are showing a behavior to lapse or to uh, go out of the business in, in coming days. So basically, once you know if their engagement starts reducing with time and if you could flag it early uh, in the business, so it's actually help you that if you know, okay, this 10% of my customers are on the high risk of going and they were giving me some X amount in the business. Now, if I can uh, know, understand, like, suppose that I can do, I can get a 10% of these customers, identify them from a model that will tell me the customers, those who were usually coming and buying milk and vegetables in the morning, uh, where what are your core customers? Now they have dropped. 
now if you see uh, then other part of the driver what we can see that maybe the prices they were paying at the initial part of their like when they were more engaged and loyal with you they were paying quite less now supposedly you have increased the prices of those areas so if price of those things are impacting a customer to lapse or now if you see that every weekend i know that customers i uh, used to come and do, do the bulk of their grocery shopping and everything now over the time this customers in the weekend have dropped down so basically a predictive model how it helps is like once you see those early signs where it's going down how i can actually ensure that uh, you know we uh, we identify this customer so whenever we need to identify we need to hear the important part is like this is called a logistic regression model so what exactly a logistic regression model it talks about is when based on the historical data like i classified the customers who were in the business who and the customers who left the business now is the case of and flagging it to be 1 and 0 so where we could understand okay these are the customers who have left the business and these are the customers who which is impacting a customer to leave the business and now going forward you there is there is way that we score the customer against all of these variables or all of these factors and now going supposedly i created a model uh, six months back now for every two or three months i'm going to score my customer and use those same set of variables and then it's going to give me a set of the customers those who will go to leave and um, those who will be the highest customers and you give them the probability is basically based on your probability of a customer to lapse so it's we are we going to talk about a probability and it's basically a logistic regression kind of a thing so this is going to logistic regression is nothing but a probability based concept where it determines which are the factors which is impacting and second we are going to get a probability of every customer to leave the business now we take the top percentile of the customers and say okay this 5 or 10 percentile of the customers they are important because they have the high risk to move so that now you can take some kind of a targeted strategy to retain them back in the business so this will be more of the predicted part so now what in customer section we covered like the segmentation the key drivers then is called a customer churn model so these are the key things that are up, uh, any of the industry looks while they talk about any customers so this all the things will get covered under here the next part that we talked about we'll be talking about a share of wallet from existing products like 